we'd like to welcome you to the Bold Cast of Five football show. I'm Clay. I'm Jay. I'm Justin. All, All right. right. We'd like to welcome you back after a hiatus due to Hurricane Matthew. For anyone that doesn't know, we are located in Jacksonville, Florida, or Duval. And uh, unfortunately, Matthew kind of ruined a few plans around here and most of the East Coast. I was going to go to Cirque du Soleil. Oh. Ruined my Cirque du Soleil. That's not good. Sorry yeah. to hear that. We maybe have to work an extra day at work. So. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, I know. Bummers all around. Yeah. Uh, I can't complain. I got a day off. I did I did get a day off too, but. I got a vacation. Vacation? Yeah. But um, there is a lot of unfortunate things that happened out of it. I mean, a lot of people lost things, lost house, lost part of houses. We lost a dock, or a pier, sorry, at Jack's Beach. Yeah. We lost part of it, Potter but there was Beach. there was there was a lot of damage that was done in San Augustine and Jack's uh, Beach. And Ponte Vedra got wrecked. Yeah, yeah. A one A. Flagler, rough. Amelia Island's pretty bad, but thoughts and prayers are out with everybody. All right, let's get the show on the road. Some we'll football. pick up, get some football. That will help everyone out. That makes gets everyone's minds going well. Absolutely. So. We're going to go back uh, about a week and a half ago and talk about the Indy versus Jags game in London. It was a 9 o'clock kick. Yes. 9, 9.30 for Nine, us. 9.30. Okay. I want to say it's like a one thirty for the Londoners. But it was a pretty good game overall. I mean, fairly, depending on how you want to look at it. it the stat line doesn't tell the whole story. but it, No. But, uh... I mean, I feel I feel, and I will I will resonate this throughout the entire show that we won in spite of our coaching. Um, yeah, and it's something that I was going to touch on. Eventually, was it was a good win, bad coaching. Um, the the best The best changes they made for the game were forced on them. Like Miles Jack finally played. Guess what? Miles Jack played pretty well. Yeah. Surprise! The only reason he played is because Dan Scooter was injured and they were forced to play him. It was good to see him make his first start at Otto. Six sacks, by the way. Yes. That yeah. was a team... Uh, not team record, but uh, basically the first time the team's done that since 10. Wow. I want to say. And, you know, the big reason why that happened is because they played Dante and Unique on the field at the same time. By the way, the interception that Unique got... Dante hit the guy's hand to knock it in the air. That was a team effort. Yeah, I think I think I saw yeah, that pretty play. And they're great on the field together. And the only reason they're on the field together is because Jared Odrick was hurt, and they were like, "Oh no, what do we do?" <laughs> well, I and I saw I saw that. Um, I think it was a Ryan eats cake uh, thing on Big Cat Country. They actually mentioned Odrick not being in there. How that? How going forward? That affected everything. Yeah. How, like, is he really that necessary? Right. It, because he, we know he is, you know, a kind of a run stopper. Right. But, I mean, I'm getting I'm getting sidetracked already. Well, it's a weird we're situation all, we're because he's, in, so. he's good. <laughs> he's good. It's not that he's a bad player. He's really good. But it's when you got so many big dudes on the field, uh, you know, your edge guys aren't getting enough snaps. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Dante and, I, and Unique need more snaps. It's it's like a Robert Mathis, uh, uh, Dwight Free kind of situation, possibly. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. I, I, I agree. That's what it could become if we let it happen. And um, I believe that, like you said, the more snaps, the better they get. Right. Because there's more practice, and Dante Fowler is essentially a rookie. No, oh, yeah. I mean, the defense is definitely growing. The defense is gelling together as we're going on. In the a second lot half. faster than I thought, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, I can honestly say that I figured well, that second quarter the that season. the uh, that our offense would have been the one dragging along the defense. But boy, was I sure wrong. Yeah, how many new pieces we got this year? We got Gibson, Malik, uh, Yannick, uh, Dante, Ramsey, Ramsey, Ramsey. Prince. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's now Miles well. Jack. Yeah. So seven out of the eleven that are on the field, uh, pretty much fresh faces. So yeah, uh, I didn't big, expect that to come together. Yeah, I didn't expect that to come together so quick. But they're 
they're clearly better. What where are they ranked now defensively? We are third overall. Overall. At least according to ESPN. Yeah, which is pretty trustworthy. I had heard six. That's what the but, last I heard was six. Yeah. So everything looks really good except for, you know, the whole points allowed. That's a big one. Yes, that that's a real big one. So point, and, uh, point, points allowed is definitely what sticks out, especially in the differential to the rest of the teams that are in the top five of the point of the and a shameless top defenses. And a shameless plug, I'm gonna plug the the guy the Jaguars owner or Jaguars owner's son, Tony Khan. It's a great follow on Instagram. Uh, he is constantly putting out all kinds of little tidbits of information, and it's very he's very analytical. So that's what he does. So yeah, yeah, he's the analytics dude. That, that is that is what his major was. But uh, the game was definitely interesting. Jaguars controlled it for the most part. The <laughs> defense kept uh, Indian check. It was basically Indy's, a replay of last year. Right? Yeah, Indy's trash. I mean, I'll be honest. But the yeah. fourth quarter was kind of worrisome. It's basically a replay of last year. They were up 24-3 to at one point, right? And, uh, man, how did that get as tight as it got? Yeah. It's the same thing when we played Buffalo and we just blew them out in the first half. Right. And all you got to do is just, like, run the clock out and get out of there and be done. And it wasn't like that. That was actually the first game where we actually ran the ball efficiently, too. Moderately, yeah. Because TJ was doing pretty carry. good, yeah. A hundred over a hundred something yards. I do know that. Yeah, I don't um, know why I can't do it here. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Um, oh. One defense. big change I noticed though is the the way they were running. Yes, was different, and that is a positive coaching adjustment. Yes. It's so I am saying that. something positive about our coaching staff. It's impressive. We're going downhill. Instead yeah. of trying these stretch plays that we're not good at. Yeah, uh, I was always questioning those stretch plays myself. Yeah, especially when you're running Chris Ivory in a stretch yeah, play. Why is Chris Ivory running sideways I've so said much? this multiple times. I don't know why you're sending Chris Ivory in a stretch play when the Jets kept sending him <coughs> up the middle, up the middle, up the middle. And guess what? It works. But I understand our interior is a little questionable. But but we've got Linder in the middle. No, I know. I, 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 w- I would... Send him behind Lunder every every time you get an opportunity. I don't think necessarily the line's the problem there because even when no. Ivory does go up the middle, he's not getting anything. He's just no, like, he's, I think he's still got re- residual issues. I'm guessing from the first game that he missed. Whatever's wrong with him? Yeah, we can only speculate because he never said. No, we'll probably never know, or at least not for a while. But Hernsey still he was clutch. Yeah, once again. How many times was he targeted? Like five times. Yeah, the handful. <laughs> just throw it to Hernsey. Yeah, God dang. It's uh, I mean, it's it's essentially the same thing with uh, with Robinson. I mean, they they don't. I feel like they don't give their playmakers enough chances. Well, that honest. game's not the that that particular game. They they uh, they had a drive where they they went to Robinson like three times in a row. Yeah, it was awesome. And he didn't get a catch every time. But I think he drew two back to back penalties. So I mean, it was yeah, fun he, watching him he, dominate. He, it was on Cam- Cam- Camardi, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, it was fun watching him dominate uh, the the Colts down the field. And Camardi, I think, got cut the following day. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, Chuck Gano apologized for losing to the Jaguars because I mean. He's one step closer. Yeah, I mean, you know what happens when you lose the Jaguars. I know. Last you get year, fired. Last year, I think, I think we were 4-4 four for four last year, right? Uh, that was a few years back, I think. It's oh. been a couple. Of Joe yeah. Philbin, Chitzinski, yeah. uh, Kubiak. <laughs> Great. Just, Rest in peace. Every Great. time you lose the Jaguars, you get fired. But hey, we, we, did, we did Kubiak a favor. Yeah, good yeah. for him. Well, it was nice for him. But moving on, that was it's good. To, it's good to see we got our first win. And actually, Bortles, I mean, he actually looked like he had a pretty good game. I mean, it was in the right direction. Right. I mean, looks within reason. He, it, you know, he made a lot of comments this week about playing looser. Right. And I feel like after he punted that ball into the end zone, that, that he played awesome. looser. Yeah. And I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful <coughs> that we get Blake from last year. I'll take it with the interceptions. I don't care. Just give me some of them, like, deadly deep balls um, that we had last year. 
Like uh, that is what we need. Because I think I know. I think I saw a stat that said we've only thrown like seven times past twenty yards. It's yeah, definitely it's, down. I, 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 it's definitely low. Definitely low. Not even double digits yet. I'm not 100 percent on the stat, but I'm it's, not defi- it's definitely either. low. But it's it's mind blowing. It's, yeah. it, it's frustrating too, especially after watching them last year, and then you know. I don't know if they're just trying to get his percentages up or what the issue is. Yeah, like, pro football focus probably is loving him right now. And you look at the, the stat breakdowns, I get that throwing like that all the time is not sustainable. you got to develop the offense beyond that. And I know that they have a really bad record. Anytime he throws over 300 yards, we've lost mm-hmm. pretty much every time. But you can't just get rid of the one thing that worked really well last year. No. No, you got to learn to incorporate it. That's that's the sign of good coaching. Yeah, incorporate, not, it, modify it, and not with it. Yeah, not run away from it. So. Make it count when you do it. Like they had, they had a walk in touchdown against the Ravens. That's just gonna bug me for a while. That one just, I don't really want to get with that one. Uh, but my two takeaways: the offense has still got to get a little less clunky, and I still don't like giving up twenty one points in the fourth quarter. <laughs> no. No, no, that no. just especially to a crappy Colts team, but I'll give it. Luck has still has the knit the, the knack of carrying that Colts team on his back. He's not. I'm not saying he's that super awesome, but that Colts team is trash. He didn't look great. No, he didn't. But I'm saying he did a lot of things to kind of keep things moving there. Oh yeah, he definitely did. Um, and and I mean, it, Miles Jack got got lost in covers once, but I mean. That that was to be expected. But the thing is, he recognized it. Yeah, he recognized it almost immediately. Yeah, I think I mean, he ended up making the tackle on the play. Right, mm-hmm. like he he blew the coverage, but he still right recovered because he's got the speed to close. A lot of promising stuff. Yeah. However, we just gotta look forward to the future. Just got his, gotta his team can't close out games, and it's no, it's very frustrating. It's disheartening. It's frustrating. So, with that, uh, we'll move on from week four. And, and we'll uh, move into week five, which was a Jaguar bye week. But we've got some other yeah. around the news topics yeah. around the NFL. Five, six, combination. Um, news and notes around the NFL. Here's some mild former Jaguar news. Blaine Gabbert has been benched in San Francisco. Imagine is, that. Is he still on Pearl Witch's fantasy team? I think so. Um, but, but but guess what? <laughs> guess what? He did draft Colin Kaepernick. Oh. I dared Perlowitz to play Gabbert against me in fantasy, and he didn't. I was very disappointed. All that hype. We have a friend who is still very much a believer. He's riding that blind train. And uh, it's a lonely train. <laughs> maybe, yeah. you get a, maybe you get one of those updated Survivor shirts from Tim. <laughs> yeah. Um, who would have shoot. thought that Blaine Gabbert wouldn't work out, though? Amazing. Yeah, I mean, he's just that trash. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. And he's upset that he lost the job. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, Colin Kaepernick will get the start versus the Buffalo Bills. We'll see how that and escapade looks. And they're still going to lose anyways, but whatever. He, Kaepernick's got his own issues. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he can't read a defense. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a problem by itself. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Remember a, a clip... Of a play last year where he had a receiver that was completely uncovered. Right. Not that it was man coverage. It was completely uncovered. And uh, he checked into a run play. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. And uh, that was like, uh, that was the end of the Colin Kaepernick era last year. But we're already back. Well. It says a lot about Blaine, huh? That says a lot about old Blaine. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, Chip Kelly wants to give another run. He's desperate. So. Uh, Chip Kelly might be able to do something with him. Maybe he'll do something magical. Well, Tom Tom Telesco wasn't uh, no wasn't the guy. So, no. um, Aquatine Hunger Force. Yeah, I think I think I think we all knew that. But um, so I mean, Chip Kelly. I think if he's just being a coach, right, he can do some good stuff, and he might be able to develop Kaepernick. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to have that. Jim Harbaugh magic with Kaepernick. So Kaepernick has changed a lot since 2012. Yeah, so. yeah. So the Ravens already fired their offensive coordinator. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the way it looks. That's that's big news. And you know the last time I saw this interesting stat, the last time they did that, they did it at the same time and they won a Super Bowl. Hey. Hey, maybe there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. Yeah, so you're saying there's a chance. Does Mark Dressman go back to Canada now? I probably would if I was him. I mean, he's just been fired and fired and fired. Yeah, he's just kind of slid his way down the, the ranks here down the totem in, pole in the uh, NFL. So. It's not not his uh, line of work. Go back to the Alouettes. Good luck, buddy. Godspeed. So, uh... Looks like Dak Prescott's the future in Dallas. <laughs> Unless you're Jerry Jones and you say in a news press conference, this is still Tony's team. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what would Dak Prescott well, have actually, to do? Actually, Dak actually said himself, "Yes, this is still Tony's team. <clears throat> what would yes. Dak have to do? He hasn't even thrown any reception. No. Yeah. He's on pace for Brady's record. I mean, he's looking... Uh, like, as good as a rookie could look. And oh, mind, you, mind you, he's doing this without their number one wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah. But, but Zeke helps a lot. Uh, the, Zeke yeah, helps oh, a yeah. Lot. I'm not, I'm not Zeke disputing helps that. a whole hell I'm of not, a lot. I'm not disputing that at all. But to have a rookie quarterback and a rookie running back starting, I mean, and going 4-1. and one, Especially the quarterback. Yeah. Um, when you've got a running game going... Um, unless you're Marcus Mariota, that's going to help you out a lot. It's going to make you a lot better. <laughs> but that's the that's the caveat. You have to yeah. not beat Marcus Mariota. That is a big caveat. But somehow he's just way worse this year. I don't know how he went. That's that sophomore slump is hitting a few quarterbacks. It's hitting so hard. Woo! Rough. Oh, I love it. It is. I'm in full support. But yeah, big things out of uh, Prescott. I mean, he is really impressive this year. Yeah, it really uh, pisses me off seeing rookies do well. It does. Like Carson Wentz is killing it. He, yeah, he's killing it too. He actually just threw his first interception at the last on the last play. Yeah, last week's game. But it uh, still looks. He's good. doing good too. Oh yeah. Jeez. Pretty sure Los Angeles is raking that decision. You mean to tell me or Cleveland that it doesn't take four years to become like remotely competitive? Is that that's, what the situation? I mean, is? that's the word on the street apparently. I know. I know, but in all but in all actuality, I'm not I'm not going to say anything horribly mean to to them about that that they they're playing to that particular quarterback's strengths. They are letting him. They are running plays that he likes, things that he does good. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're and, playing to their strengths, and that and that that is a definite. That is something that you have to do. Well, it helps also with Dak. He's walking into a very good offensive line. And the he's best got, in the league still. Oh, yeah. And he's got an all-pro tight end. Mm-hmm. And a couple decent very, receivers. Very old. All very, pro very, tight end. very, very old. Very ancient. But no, still an all-pro, at least at one time. He still gets open. It's crazy because he he's so slow. Yeah. I mean, they throttled Cincinnati last week. Yeah, I did not see that coming. No, that was pretty bad. Could it be that Cincinnati's just not very good right now, though? It could be. That's a that's a definite possibility. It's definitely not looking like a competitive division. Looks like Pittsburgh's just going to walk away with it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty rough over there. Because, I mean, I mean, the Ravens almost lost to the Jaguars. I knew they were frauds. That's just how it was. So, so I mean, I mean, you're looking at that being pretty non-competitive there. I mean, let's, let's, I mean, let's be honest. Let's look at some of the studs and duds for this year. Or going to the first quarter of the season. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, you kind of have to think about the Bengals. They're the two and three right now. They're what? Well, yeah. Um, a lot of sad cats. There are a lot sad of sad cat cats. Um, I they did beat Miami though. I can't count us because we haven't proven it in the past. So no. it's hard to say. Oh. Jacksonville, so disappointing. We won one of our first four games. That's actually pretty good for the Gus Bradley era. It is. But the Panthers, dude. Wow. What happened there? They just lost to the Bucks, and Roberto Aguayo missed two field goals in that game. Yes. Like, they they just look so bad against a bad Bucks team, really. Yeah, it's a bad team. A, a Bucks team that stumbled its way to a win. Like... They had so many missed opportunities. Yeah, they had. And they screwed it up so many times, and they still won in Charlotte. Carolina 
had four turnovers. Four turnovers. Yeah. And Carolina was still in the game with yeah. 30 seconds left. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, at home, defending NFC champions. That's mind-blowing. Best defense in the <clears throat> league last year, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Between them and Denver. <coughs> so, what happened to Carolina? It's crazy. And it's not just Cam. I mean, Cam's been in most of the games. Uh, but it's it's, crap knocked out of him. With the exception of the last one. And that's a key point. He has been getting abused since the first game against Denver. It was really and, Minnesota did a, did work on him. I was wondering, I was wondering what you guys thought about that. Do you think certain quarterbacks don't get calls? Yeah, I mean, of yeah, it's pretty obvious. Look uh-huh. at ours. I yeah, remember, I mean, I, I remember, remember David Grubb being unconscious on the floor. Yeah, and they oh, didn't call I him until they that. realized he was unconscious. Yeah, they walked <laughs> over him, and when he didn't move, they threw the flag on him, literally <laughs> on him. Okay, maybe it was unnecessarily rough. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> but and I and I that's what that's what makes me a little frustrated with the humans the human aspect of you know officiating. Yeah, it's the good and the bad of the sport is the human element. Like, Man, it's been there for a while. Like it's well, I mean, if you're gonna call it on some players, call it on all players. I, is that I is, is that is, I, I is, is agree, that is that too much to ask? No, I but mean, they'll say but, stuff like I, I I think I know David made a comment. They're like, and Ed Hockley made a comment too. Hey, you're big, you can take it. Yeah, yeah. That big Roethlisberger had his nose broken, and they didn't call a penalty. So, do you think maybe there's hands to the face or yeah, <laughs> something? Exactly something. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this, he had a broken but, nose. I mean, I mean, there, there's been two hits on Blake this year that I know are unnecessary. One, when he is running out of bounds. He's literally out of bounds. This is the first game of the season. Boom! Gets hit out of bounds. Not a flag in sight. Well, that game, let's not even get into that first game. We already know there was a penalty issue there. Huge. Huge penalty issue. But, I mean, I've seen Blake getting frustrated this year, getting up from piles because a lot of cheap shots getting thrown on him. and And they're not... They're not I doing mean, anything. Is he's a big was, guy. Was it this last one or was it the Ravens game? But someone basically got up and stepped on him. One of the uh, players just got up and pushed they, off on him with, with, with a foot. Game. I don't remember. It was one of the two games. They stepped on him. Because like, they finally caught a late hit in this game. Oh, yeah. He came uh, running way after the fact. I don't know. It's I, very frustrating. I, I, could, I could talk for hours about officiating, but I digress. Yeah. But I mean, it's just that's what the way the way the league is. If you're not, depends on your logo. Depends on the face of the franchise. Oh uh, yeah, but I mean, Basically. even if you're like one of the stars of the NFL, you don't necessarily get them because not necessarily. Marcus Merkin doesn't get those calls even. No, uh, it, I mean it depends on the depends on the logo, depends on the face. Yeah, and in Roethlisberger's case, he's got the logo, but I guess he doesn't have the face. If you if you if they if you have a perception of being more delicate, you get more right. calls. That's well, why Brady, and that's why uh, Manning. Manning, they always got the calls. Even Eli gets the calls, too. Yeah. He gets it to the certain end. Break his frail giraffe neck. <laughs> and Breeze gets the calls. I mean, if you get that certain type. Yeah, like, Breeze. They're, Breeze always, they're always getting Yeah, he's calls. undersized. That's he's why. He's like 5'8". Yeah. Something like that. But then why Then why doesn't uh, why doesn't Seattle's quarterback get the calls? Yeah, he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. Because he runs. He's a running quarterback. Not a pocket passer. Come on, man. That's BS. Give it the program. If you're a running quarterback, you're asking for it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's look at some of these four, first quarter shockers and duds real quick. As we were talking about the Bengals, I mean, they're kind of underwhelming. And as Justin brought up, the, the Panthers are pretty bad, and the Cardinals are right there with them. Yeah, that one I did not see. I I kind of I kind of thought the Cardinals were gonna were gonna go out, you know, like no holds bar. We're gonna do this thing because I mean, what what do they have? They have an aging Carson Palmer. They have an aging um, Larry Fitzgerald, and they have uh, Bruce Arians, who's not getting any younger either. Yeah, I expected them to kind of take a step back. Um, I I honestly say I didn't. I did not expect them to take a step back. I took I expected them to get pretty close, but not close enough to the yeah. Super Bowl. Um, and they didn't. They're not going to actually. 
to do that. I wouldn't call that. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, <laughs> it's certainly not. Breaking um, news. Out in their division, the Rams are probably the biggest surprise, only because they've already won more games than I thought they were going to win this year. After watching that first game, I was like, wow. They got waxed by Blaine Gabbert. They look so bad. And it's the same thing that happened last year. It is. That first game, the uh, the 49ers come out looking like a legitimate team, and then they just... Pfft. They no. didn't look like a legitimate team, to be to no. be frank, actually. No. It's just that's how bad the Rams looked. They were just so inept. And uh, they have... Somehow they have three more wins than I thought they would right now. Yeah, that's impressive. They, I don't know how they did it. They well, beat Seattle. Well, um, I can tell you that speech that he gave in uh, in Hard Knocks that put him over the edge. There yeah. goes seven and seven. There goes eight and eight. There goes nine and seventy nine. Yeah. <laughs> Cut out a couple losses there. Yeah. But uh, I know it's just like what the heck. A couple know that you're shockers. You got the Cowboys. I was we talking about with Dak. Four and four and one. Yeah, uh, I definitely would not have seen that coming. I honestly don't think. Honestly, don't think it happens with Tony Romo and a healthy Des. Probably not. I mean, because somehow last year they managed to fail miserably throughout the entire season. But that's Cowboys. That's the Cowboys' way. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's how they do it. Though. <laughs> Just oh. collapsing. <laughs> yeah, they, they um, so you think it's you think it's all Dak? No, I don't. I don't think it's all Dak. I think I think it's a great offensive line, which we knew they had because of two years ago, mm-hmm. and. Elliot is proving that he was drafted where he should have been drafted. Yeah, I, I, I feel I feel personally if I would I would have been, I would have been pissed off if the Jaguars had drafted him. Yeah, because I I don't value running backs because I'm with Clay on this one. I feel like you can pick up a decent running back in the second and third rounds. Yeah, I agree with that too. But as I told you, Zeke's special. Zeke's special. I'm glad we got Jalen. Yeah. I, I agree with that, too. Zeke I, I agree 100%. Me. Zeke has blessed me multiple times. Because yes. because of him, the Jaguars got Jalen Ramsey. And because of the way our fantasy draft worked out, I got a Zeke with Elliot. Yeah, yeah, I got him, too, in a bunch of my leagues. Oh. But. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad y'all got Zeke and oh, all your fantasy drafts. But Zeke, I told you before, he is special. There, there's Occasionally, you do have your special backs. But they, they're just not what they used to be anymore. Yeah, they really. I mean, you can, get the, you can get them a lot more. And, and there are so there's so many of them. Right. For the amount that you you don't you don't you only can use one most of the time. Occasionally right. you'll but use two. Thing. That's that's the thing. It's more of a two back league now. Two yeah. three back league to where it used to be. They just workhorse. I work still horse. don't see the argument to take one in the first round because let's say you do get one of those special guys. Right. Um, if the Vikings didn't have some sort of Love I don't affair know with, with Adrian Peterson. I don't know what's happening with them right now, but like old Vikings yeah. would be doomed right now. Oh yeah, they because they lost their offense, you know. And um, a lot of teams that do have those special backs rely on them so much that when they inevitably get hurt, because running backs get hurt uh, a lot more frequently. Yes, oh, yeah. and that and that there there is another example of why I don't and I just I honestly I don't value them as much because. Like like you just said, you you're only a two you, you you switch them out. You don't you don't run, run one into the ground nearly as much. I'd rather have two good running backs than the one, one elite. Good, yeah, running back. Fair I enough, totally agree. That's very fair enough. And as you just touched on the Vikings, wow, how like that's amazing. The defense is unreal. Defense is I've watched top them a couple times this year, and the defense is unreal. But how is the offense like? You lose your starting quarterback. You lose your like, you know, all pro all running pro, back, yeah, all pro back, right? and you don't have really any great weapons no. to speak of out there. And so, Sam Bradford's actually good. They're getting well, it done. Well, he was. They have not thrown an interception through five games. Well, which is a record tied by the Los Angeles Rams of sixty nine, I believe. They're not looking like a juggernaut offense, but they're efficient. Well, yes, and I never, I was never a Sam Bradford fan. Even him coming out of college, I didn't like him. Um, but he is a man, he's a game manager, and if you have a good defense, you can have a good game manager quarterback and and and, and keep the ship afloat. Well, you're supposed to be more than a game manager. That's why he was first overall pick. Well, he wasn't they, supposed to be a game manager. Well, they screwed up. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I'm just being honest. <laughs> he is a hundred million dollar game manager. Yeah, that's a, that's an expensive ass game manager. That's why I never. I he just uh, I 
I never did. He just had a couple of broken knee pieces. Three knees, to be oh, precise. Yeah, exactly. He's just been injury prone. But he's got all the tools. Yeah, I mean, his mechanics, his arm, his, his arm he's got the high weight, arm, whatever, yeah. all that, you know. You're not going to get a lot of good deep stuff with him, um, but you're going to get good, efficient stuff down the field. I was trying to but, think of the wide receiver out there, but it's slipping my head. I know they drafted one that's not even Moss. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, he right? Was, he was there the other day. Yeah. Chris Carter. Uh, uh, yeah, Carter. Good guy. But uh, they drafted one, he, and he was inactive last week, so... Uh, that's Stephon, working out well. Stephon Diggs, oh uh, yeah, that yeah. that's it, that's it. Yeah. It's and, like another one. But they're Patterson, gonna, is he still there? Cornell Patterson, maybe, maybe they're gonna maybe. wreck us when they come to Jackson. Oh god! But hey, at least we hopefully maybe wearing our teals. Possibly we're gonna lose a teal. We're gonna put Jimmy on the wall. It's a good day. Yep, it'd be, wow. like, it'd be like the old days. So good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But hey, fire, th- fire yeah. takes right now, guys. Yeah, good. Uh, last little bit of NFL news. Um, this is actually NFL news. One, the NFL has been a bit of prudes. They're not allowing the teams to share clips of their players. Clubs can no longer post game day videos on their social media accounts from inside the stadiums. What's it? Thoughts? Inside the stadiums? Yes. Or was it just social media? Yes, that that is why that tweet of the Carolina Panthers tweeting out, uh, what was it, a Stewart a Stewart run up the middle gif dot gif. I think it was a pass or something. But yeah. yeah, something like that. That that is actually why because they didn't want to get they don't want to get twenty five thousand. I thought you were saying in stadium, so it's just social media accounts, right? I believe. I'm, I'm ninety five percent. It's supposed to be social media. You cannot do anything inside the stadium. Like they can't, they can't post. Like, okay, say Allen, say Allen Robinson gets like an ADR bomb. They can't put a vine on their Twitter, right? But they're gonna show replays in the stadium, right? Yes, that's different. But the but you can't because you're there. But you can't no, you can't show a highlight unless the NFL tweets it out first, and then you can retweet the NFL tweet. That's what I. That's what I've noticed on. <clears throat> they so, said they were worried about bad content being released by the teams and then like the week it's imposed i saw their video cut up of um brown in pittsburgh and it says a b movie and they have him like photoshopped like a bee running down the field that's what the nfl came up with but they're worried about bad content from wow the team sites well i wow. i have i mean and you you pointed out like last year, I guess you followed the San Diego Chargers or was, or was on the San Diego Chargers, and the the San Diego Chargers guy that runs their Twitter was using it for his personal Twitter. So, I mean, <laughs> what? <laughs> a, who's using it for his personal Twitter? <laughs> there's a couple. <laughs> uh, there's a couple. It's like it's like he forgot to log out. I guess that's awesome. I mean, I've got enough Twitter accounts. It happens. <laughs> I've got yeah. a few bold cast yeah. by accounts, so uh, yeah. It's when you get you logged in, it, it, it's there. So hungry, nope. need to find my wife and head to PF Chang's. Says the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's from way back. That's awesome. But it, it was, you know, Twitter was new. The NFL didn't know what was going on with it. So no, yeah, see Twitter. Yeah. And a smile update: the San Diego Chargers are leading the Denver Broncos on Thursday night football. Of course they are. So the color quarter. Yeah, it's not the fourth just, quarter. Just Still wait. plenty of time. <laughs> Still plenty of time. <laughs> I know. Unless unless they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, they yeah they like to lose in the fourth. The meltdown in every game except for one. <laughs> but hey, at least they're wearing those fancy royal blue color rush jerseys. They're gonna look really good losing the Broncos. I, that's the best way to do it. Look good. Look good. Do it style. <laughs> and then I guess there's one other topic uh, you want to touch on. Yeah, go go back to the fact of uh, the kind of all being prudes. Maybe a reason they're losing ratings for the first time in eons. Well, how does that help ratings? Well, it, it doesn't hurt them. That's for damn sure. I mean, come on. I like seeing a little gif of a touchdown. It makes me want to turn on the TV if the it's, TV's not on. My point is they're trying to censor everything. They're, they want they're, to control, control everything. everything. They want to control the team Snapchats. They want to control. They, they want to control the media and how it's flowing. Yeah. 
which, okay, I can understand to an, to an extent, but these are still individual teams. Ownership of, they, they, there are actually organizations yeah. under the umbrella, but they actually are organizations separate of the NFL. I know, and if you want to build that culture around the teams, you know, you got to let them be unique and let them do their exactly. thing. Exactly, you got to let them do what they do. I like our social media team, and I can tell you people in Carolina are more engaged with the team because their social media team is very good. Exactly. Yes, and that's the same here. Same here in Jacksonville, and we've yet to, we've yet to experience a game day live situation on Twitter. But I'm guessing we will here in four days. Yes, three. It's not been all that long. But uh, it's kind of day, but this day's pretty much over. <laughs> it's it. it the general day's <laughs> over. Yeah, generally the point. But the market's already closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's already closed, it's over, it's a wrap. Yep, cut this one over. But along with that, with the NFL just being stouches and grumpy, anyways, well, I, I just, mean, what's causing the, the, the lack of interest this season? Is it the fact that we had no Brady, no Manning for the first five weeks? Four weeks? Sorry, four weeks. Uh, part of it. And I know people are using the election as part of the excuse because you look at the ratings for Fox News and CNN. They are up a lot right now, um, and I gotta say, every day a new story pops up for for the election right now. So, oh yeah, it's pretty good. It's definitely like taking over the news cycle, whereas normally we're escaping all of that with football. This is like the one time every four years where it's like, okay, we'll pay attention to all this. And you even get locker room talk involved in the election. So I mean, yeah, so there's crossover. Yeah, so there's crossover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, so I think it's part of it, but I think um, legitimate point that there's those superstars aren't quite there. Like I, I know who the superstars are in the league, but right. if you ask like Joe you know, Blow, yeah, you ask the average person. Like I got a guy at my work who says he's a <coughs> says he's a Vikings fan. Um, he couldn't name anybody on their team. I could guarantee you that he has no idea who Von Miller is, for example. Right. Von Miller's one of the stars of the NFL right now. Absolutely. He has no idea who he is. I mean, he's a Super Bowl MVP. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but he's not He's not Tom Brady. He's not Manning. So, mm. um, you need more of those people. Well, yeah. And, I mean, and, and you're I, even without Romo. And I'm sure I'm sure that, you know, it's going to take, take some time because, like... The even even most of the new stars like we could, we could we could have like how many how many people that in our friend base were ready to nominate Andrew Luck as the next Peyton Manning the next Tom Brady everyone that I even talked to was like you. was like oh God bless that quarterback is damn near amazing well, he's also, gonna he's gonna he's gonna own the AFC South for the next twelve years that's sort of what we're being fed. From people that like he was a once in a generation quarterback and all that good stuff. That is good, but I don't think he's once in a generation. Oh well, he's already proven it. He's not. So, in so, my opinion, yeah, I mean, like, like elite quarterbacks, unless they're Brett Favre, don't throw that many interceptions. I don't yeah, know. yeah, but I don't know. There's multiple things I can see. I mean, probably bad matchups. Yeah, and the I mean, look uh, at that Carolina uh, game. That was horrible. I, I mean, who wanted to twice. see the, the 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 Packers and the Giants? That was so. That was that That's bad. the closest to a marquee match that they've had in prime time. Yeah, I mean, it was, but the, it still wasn't good. It wasn't good. I didn't really care for it. I mean, the Packers trolled them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You already knew who was going to win, even though the Giants tried. Yeah, we live in a time where the Rams and the Forty ers are playing in prime time. But yeah, the Jacksonville Jaguars aren't. Oh, what was Thursday Night Football? Was the Cardinals and the 49ers? Yeah. Oh, woof. That was rough. And no uh, Palmer. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it was real bad. Two now backup quarterbacks. Yeah. It was a lot of trash. But, hate to break it to you, I need a lot of Rams. Because they're in Los Angeles. Just like we get a lot of Giants. Why? Because they're in New York. They're going to push those media markets down your throat. Whether they're good or not. Exactly. You're going to get a bunch of crappy Giants football, a bunch of crappy Jets football. You always get a bunch of crappy Jets football. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, All it's time. true. It's 
It's a given. I don't know. It's just it's just kind of annoying because the matchups that they're giving us, and maybe and maybe and maybe the league as a whole is not as good. Yeah, I mean the product, the product, the good. product out there isn't as good. I don't know because I think I think I, I think I think you told me the first stat, and then I brought the second stat was like eleven percent, and then this past week was like up to thirteen percent or down thirteen yeah, percent. Not really good. At um, you, you got a good point. Um, you watch some of the wild, crazy stuff that's happening in a college football game, and then compare it to what you got on Sundays. It seems sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> not. It's not. It's not as. It's not as wild. Well, it's it's definitely not Odell Beckham one handed catch in the end zone marquee. I mean, yeah, he's, the, you know, he's, he's having a rough year. Yeah, he's having a rough year too. So I mean, there. I like. In, I think. I think it speaks to. A, all of our points, like like you said, I think I, I think it's as do with the players. The, they're not there's not very many marquee players, and the marquee players that they used to have were are getting older. So how do you fix it? I think I think I think it takes time. Actually, we got to get to know these players. Yeah, we got to get to know these players. You got to some of these players are fairly young in the league. Like I I. I'm biased, of course, but I think Jalen Ramsey is going to be one of those marquee players. He yeah. he, 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 oh, yeah. he he will be he will be our um, what's the what's the one Legion of Boom guy out there in Seattle? That, Sherman. Yeah, I think what the NFL needs to get the ratings up is an elite Jaguars. I like it. Obviously, <laughs> I'm definitely in approval of that. That's going to fix everything. Yeah, of course. Let's talk about them. All right, Just leading to that good stuff. Start with a little Jaguar news. Uh, team activated Aaron Colvin from suspension and dropped Dwayne Gratz. Who was immediately picked up. Good for Gratz. And good to, for the LA Rams, I guess. To, to be a backup. He was not ever going to start. All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> but good to see Colvin back. Yeah, He'll yeah, be back yeah. at nickel and all good to see Colvin back. Good to see Devon House going to sit on the bench for a little bit. Yeah, and just and just cool Ooh. down. No, it's not. It's not, I, okay. It don't, wasn't planned. Okay, out. don't look at it as bad, but look at it as he got a little too handsy, three three too many times because those okay. penalties were tragic. Yeah, they're yeah. killer, <laughs> really bad. And I mean, like spot fouls. He was yeah. in the reason we picked him up from Green Bay is because he would look good when he was in a limited role. He looked good, and he was. He's kind of we drafted him. He was a backup when we picked him up from Green Bay. That's where he's best is when he's limited time kind of guy. Yeah, and I and, and he, he even admitted it last year that he's a handsy. You, you, if you're gonna play handsy, you got to do it out of the side of the zebra. Can't be handsy. No, you no one likes handsy. It's derailing one of the candidates' presidencies. Uh, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't don't recommend be, it. Don't be handsy, especially yeah. not on video <laughs> or audio. <laughs> Anyways, um, <coughs> I didn't like saying this, but uh, best of luck to him. Nick Marshall picked up off the practice squad by the Jets. That was such a bummer. I, it, it, was, it was a bummer, but something that was tweeted out, I think, by uh, by Uncle Chaps. He tweeted out, he goes, he said something that I don't necessarily know if I agree with, but it kind of made sense. He said, those projects, do, do the Jaguars really have time for a three-year project? And I was kind of like, because he'll be worthwhile in a couple years. Yeah, and I, I, I want, I wanted to be like, damn it, chaps, you're wrong. But I didn't because I didn't feel like he was wrong. But I, I, I still like the guy. Yeah, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, there's a lot of potential. I, I don't know. I probably would have still kept him. But hey, whatever. But, but, but what do I know? But, uh, yeah, put him but, on the active roster. But yeah. we already have, we already have that other guy that played. In front of uh, Dave on House last week. I know, Josh Johnson. I couldn't remember his name. So do you want him on the field more than Josh Johnson? No. Do you I want him on the field more than Devon House? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Shot through the bow. What's that, fifth best corner? He's still grown. He's still raw. He's grown, but He's boy. got an upside. He's grown, boy. I'm telling you, he's got an upside. Yeah, and but I guess, I guess the point that... Uncle Chas was trying to make. No, was, I understand. I understand. We need more we quality need immediately. Now. Yeah, and I do understand that. But I just hate losing any talent because I saw this back when we lost Brandon Marshall. And 
He's pretty all right. Hey, I was with you from that from that one. I was like, I don't know why I cut that guy. He's gonna be all right. Should have held on to any like. Any tiny piece of talent that came from Gene Smith drafts, you should have cherished. And what about uh, this? Is totally off topic. What about Zach Miller becoming like the dude? <laughs> the dude up there. Wow. Well, we the dude. It only took five years. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> five or six. It's bound to have projects. <laughs> I know. Speaking of projects, but but uh, I think I jumped the gun on that one. Last bit of uh, Jaguar news: Luke Jokel. He probably played his last snap as a Jacksonville Jaguar. He was injured in the London, in London, uh, ACL, MCL, and meniscus surgery. That knee is butchered. Yeah, poor guy was. Hate he's, to get, it. he's gonna go down as a bust, and I don't think it's totally. It feels like a Tyson Alawalu situation where he was a good player that got drafted way, way too, too high. high. Yep, yep. And should have been a second round. Never, like I mean, like he, like last year. People were like, oh, it's just trash. No, he wasn't. He was actually yeah. pretty solid last year, exactly. besides that terrible Texans game. Whew. That was a bad game. And, of course, that lust left a lasting impression on a lot of people. Of course it did. And then he looked good at guard this year. Yeah, he, 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 he did. And um, Gus actually said something like, don't count him out yet today in the Gus Bradley show. So, I don't really necessarily know. But we will bring him back when we uh, get to the playoffs. Yeah. So, but... I mean, it, 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 it's, it's one of those things. It's no, I don't have any hard feelings over losing the guy. I mean, it would be better for him, I think. Yeah, because yeah. because guess what? He's he, I don't I don't think he would have wanted to come back as a guard anyway. When he when the offensive line or the um, tackle money is substantially higher, and the league is always looking for something at tackle. Give me something, yeah. and it saves us from that awkward. Uh, we're going to give you a low ball offer. Right. Okay, well, you can go test the market. Yeah. Okay, bye. You already know what the outcome is going to be. Why yeah. dance that dance? Yeah, I totally agree. No, what do you think about Amon Boy? Amon Boy. Um, he, I, I, think, I think the position that he's going to play, I think he'll do just fine. I mean, I know, I, know, I know a little bit about him. I know he played in like three different teams previously. He has a couple starts underneath his belt. I mean. And he played up in Chicago, actually, for like 12 yep. games or something. Yep. So I mean, I mean, so so, and and I guess I, I guess he can play tackle and. Um, I think that's why he was active is because he could swing to tackle or guard to yeah. Brian who got hurt. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's why he got the start over. <coughs> uh, what's the guy? The other one. Chris. Oh, okay. Reed. 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 Chris okay. Reed. I had to. Yeah. I mean, Reed's Teamwork. Like, Reed's Teamwork a guard. Right there. Reed's just exclusively a guard. Right. And got so it. awesomely, is that what? Amomway? Awesome 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 I like it. Amomway. Amomway. Dad with names. Yeah, especially these. And with that, we'll slide on into Soldier Field. One o'clock Sunday. Jacksonville Jaguars and the Bears. Okay. Get hype. Game yeah. of the week. Woo! Okay. <laughs> note. Keynote right here. Brian Hoyer. Oh man, we've seen him once or twice. He kind of lit us up at the end of the season last year. Twice, he let us up. Oh. Oh, Both yeah. times, oh yeah, that was the game here. He lit us up actually. <laughs> Both times he threw for over three hundred yards. I think it was two. Never mind. I was talk <laughs> to uh, that was a bad one. That was a bad one. That was a real bad one. Well, you know what? He was actually pretty much terrible the the whole game until the fourth quarter. Yeah. He he That's couldn't find terrible. DeAndre Hopkins until the fourth quarter. Yeah. The only time that we beat him was when he was with the Browns, Doesn't which I didn't know. The house got set. <laughs> I that think was the next game he did. Okay. <laughs> I think that was because of like, he, well, he screwed it up so bad in the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, he, he played isn't that tight when, coverage the whole time. Yep. Because isn't that when uh, DeAndre Hopkins got two touchdowns, like pretty much back to back? He had a yep. ten point lead at the start of the fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah. Unreal. Blew that wide open. So I'm not. Uh, we weren't know, doing well. Brian Hoyer's not anything special. No, no, he's not. But he, but he, he, he's he, he's a good backup. He's a great backup because he could come in and in a pinch, 
Get you, get get you one or two. Apparently, so is Clipboard Jesus because that dude keeps getting backup jobs too. He is bouncing around all Just, over. He keeps finding a place. You know. Yeah, he does. Thing, but I didn't yeah. know he was either. But uh, he is. Uh, but that that was an interesting. That was a little interesting tidbit on Brian Hoyer. I mean, God, I just, I still, I still feel like, even though they just lost Kevin White, who's not very good. No, he's no, not. I don't think he's very good either. Yeah. Well, he hasn't even been. Able well, to he hasn't play. played very much either. So he only got to play three games this season. Yeah, and he was all injured all last year. But I mean. Sucks. They do have a, I guess, a really good running back out of the fifth round. I do not remember his name to the life of me. They got a little speedy dude, too. Yeah. I yeah. watched him. I watched uh, some of the replay of the Colts game, and every big play Chicago had was that little speedy dude. Yes. Dang it. I should know his name because I just looked it up. But the f- I still can't get over the fact that Hoyer overthrew that pass. He missed the dude, missed the one dude wide open. Meredith, Cameron Meredith. Oh, that's it. That's, that's it. the little guy. And that, he had two touchdowns. That yeah. if he gets in between the second level and coverage, we're gonna get burnt. Well, we, we can we, we cannot let him get between. He's a running back. No, he's a he's a receiver. He's a slot okay, receiver. Okay, that's that's probably the one I'm thinking of. And he had a he had a route wide open to him near the end of the game. Overthrew it. Yeah, there's like a fourth down, third down. Yeah, and. He, the the way he kept killing the Colts is they were playing a lot of zone and yeah he gets in the middle he would just find like an open spot in the zone and just like that gave him space and he's very dangerous if he has space because he's a quick guy so if we play like the old Jaguars do he's gonna kill us because we're we're gonna find soft spots in that zone and we're just gonna get wrecked um, they are playing tighter this year so. I don't know. I just don't trust this team. I don't either. I want to I call this don't. game a should win. Should win. Yeah, I, but, and, and I, I agree. I agree. Um, 100%. Because, I mean, they, they're they not very good. I think, I think we match up better than them on almost every position. No, I mean, logically. Uh, on yeah. offense and defense. Yeah, I mean, you literally you like to think so. What would you say Chicago I, has that's elite? Dan Trevathan. That's it. I mean, I mean, is he elite? He's if he ain't elite, he's damn near. Dawson Jeffrey's good. Yeah. He's what? <laughs> that's I it. mean, wow. Okay, Jason started yeah. to say something, then he stopped. That's yeah, it. I mean, I mean he's, he's good. good. He's good. I think Dan Trevathan's. If he's not elite, he's damn near. That that that's probably their only player on defense. That How's could... he been doing this year? Not too shabby. I think he was injured like the same game, but he's back now. Uh, yeah, I mean, good player on a bad defense. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. They gave up twenty nine points to the Colts. Is that what it was? Yeah, something like that. I feel like if that game's in Chicago, the Colts lose. Um, yeah, but it was a, it's a toss up. It's just two trash teams playing each other, and that's. Um, and that and that and that's how I view that's how I view this time ta- this this unfortunately this. yeah I I think that we are certainly more talented though yeah look at our secondary like I was asking I was asking Clay a lot yesterday who who is their who is their number one corner tomorrow uh, Bears Bears I don't think we're talking about Chicago being the secondary I don't remember who the corner is yeah they don't even have a number one corner. Yeah, offhand. I mean, I don't. That 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 even tells you how much up. I know offhand. Yeah, that tells you how much I know the roster. I mean, they're not a team we play a lot. They got Tracy Porter. Oh yeah, Tracy's up there. Old ass Tracy. Man, Porter. he's he's got to be pushing forty two. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the A A A R P has got to be kicking. They up. got this guy named uh, Alan Ball. Wow, wow, <laughs> he is. He's bouncing around now. And that's the thing. Once you start seeing, like, retread... <laughs> yeah, that says a lot. ...love players for the Jaguars on rosters, you're like, oh, that roster's probably not very good. And that... Oh, that's they got Peanut. Good. Charles Tillman. What? But yeah. he retired. No, he, he's not He's not with them anymore. He's definitely done. Oh, is he? He's, yeah. He should be. He's 35. I thought he retired. Yeah, he did. He did. That's old. Yeah. But... Because he was in Carolina last year. But my, 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 point, my point is... 
Their defense is bad. If you think Indy's defense is bad, their defense is real bad. Yes. So yes. you got that going for you. Yeah. And the only, the only, if 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 we can just allow them a few less points than what we put up, we're and good. And we already know the quarterback. And John Fox actually was contemplating on the fact he didn't straight off say, but he was contemplating on the fact that he actually kind of was favoring Hoyer more than Cutler. Oh yeah, he 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 mentioned that last year, I think. Martellus Bennett kind of like shredded Cutler. Really? In an ESPN interview. Yeah. Like everybody knows that Cutler's not the leader in that locker room. Whew. Yeah. That's right. So Chicago is twenty six in the league in run defense, and that's why I think we win. Yeah. Yeah, because, because when we run the ball, we win. <coughs> and also, also, I can't imagine the Colts defense being that much better or that much worse. So Indianapolis is twentieth in run defense. There you go. So, so well, yes. think about it. This is probably. I mean, I'm not trying to put the cart before the carriage or the horse before the carriage or whatever the term is, but this is probably the worst team we played so far. Yeah. Yeah. Well, only because Indy somehow beat them. Indy is okay, bad. Indy is bad. Indy is Yes, bad. but 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 like you okay. said, like worst you said, team, worst quarterback. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But like you <laughs> said, like you said earlier, if if the if the teams are switched home and away, you got. He just said that he yeah. believes the Bears would have won. So I, think so I think I think I think I think it was only. What do they win by, anyways? It was one score game. Yeah, they scored late to win. It was pretty close. Yeah, so. So, uh, with that, let's get to the closing here. Um, can they keep the momentum going? Do they get this done? Can you call uh, momentum with one, <laughs> one game against a bad team that they almost blew? That's rough to call momentum. Well, I mean, it, I mean, you need momentum. I mean, I mean, it's I something. Mean. So they're gonna they're gonna grab onto anything they can. Okay. Um, Would you say it's a must win game? I I honestly honestly don't think anything's a must win. See, it's must win or it can't lose. I say it's can't lose. Okay, can't lose. But but it doesn't it doesn't affect anything on like on like in the scheme of coaching or anything like that. I'm talking. About, I'm not worried about the coaching now. I mean, that's here's that's, the, that's, here's that's the not, hilarious not reality. Point. Here's the hilarious reality of the Jets. That we can go one in fifteen and Gus Bradley. No no no! Not that hilarious reality. The other hilarious reality, the one where we have one win on the season. And we're still technically second place in the AFC South. <laughs> so that's no, the thing. I think we're third, but because we won a division game, we're technically second. Oh, um, my drop. And so, like after this week, I, you know, we, it could, we could actually move even closer to yeah. first place in the AFC South. That's hilarious. Um, and that, Houston's that's already got three, two losses, so. Yeah, Houston uh, is really trying and to make and a they're, big deal and out they're of they're treading water right now. They're trying to make a really big deal out of Jadavian Clowney, but that's not addressing the fact that their defense is Can not as good as Can it play was. Quarterback? What? Can Clowney play quarterback? They better hope. I mean, that may be an option. If he does, he won't do it for long. Is he going to get injured again? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, okay, wrap this up real quick. Biggest surprise so far with the team. Who's your biggest surprise? Two or four weeks. In the, in the first quarter of the season. Biggest surprise is Blake. Ooh. That's a surprise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would that be your disappointment, too? It'd be both. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason, what about you? Um, I think I'm going to go a little defense on it and say... It's Jalen Ramsey going from nickel to starting against uh, the number one wide receiver in that short of time. All right. Well, I can say I'm kind of kind of expected that because I mean I'm used to Jalen. I felt like you had it in him. Yeah, I, I'll say that. But mine, I would probably say, would be mine. I would probably say would be undoubtedly Yannick Ngakwe. That's a good answer. Yeah, that's a good one. I like it. Because he's definitely shown up more in the run game than anyone expected. And he is definitely obviously a pass, a, a pass threat, a pass, a pass, a pass rushing beast 
right now. He's already got three. He leads, yeah. he leads the Jags. Yeah. So he's definitely making an impact. That's a heck of a, a rate he's on. That's easily a double-digit sack season. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. We haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, Bobby McRae. <laughs> Woo! Double, double. But, uh, um, biggest disappointment? Biggest disappointment. I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to say that's Blake. Because it, 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 that, that would be too easy. I'd probably say uh, coaching. I can't be disappointed by a coaching staff that's doing what they've been doing. Well, I mean, it's, well, it's well, I, well, I did. Well, I did. I did expect them to keep on the path at least what they were doing last year to yeah, show a little just, offense. It's just some incremental growth, right? I mean, the defense is looking a little bit better, so I mean, I'll give them that. But the head coach, I'm still not impressed with. Um, my biggest disappointment, I guess, I'll probably go. Bounce everyone around there. Come on. I mean, honestly, I would probably go with Ivory. Ivory's another good answer, yeah. Yeah, Ivory. I was, I was <laughs> expecting a lot more there. But I understand some of the reasoning. He's not. He, I mean, He's, he was in the hospital right before game one. No one expects. No one's seen that one coming. That was kind of a blind side. Yeah. And we can only speculate what happened there. But. Right. I mean, if you want another half a part of uh, disappointment, would be kind of in my way it would be uh, Parnell. Parnell's been uh, good and bad. Like some games, yeah. He's like some games, his games he's all right. Some games he's not. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure. So with that, you have any other thoughts? Um, I wanted to get like a final score from you guys. Well. Play, what, what, what's your what's for, the, your for the game? Yeah. I, I, my, my, I'm gonna just give you guys a mine. It's probably like 21 14. It's still only a one score game. So, you don't think that they can capitalize on this bad defense? No, wow, that's pretty bad. Um, I'm saying and, uh, Jack, Jack's obviously win, obviously by a touchdown. I'm gonna say 26 13. Ooh, Jacksonville, damn, I like it's fire. 27-21 Jaguars. So win by two field goals. I like it. I think that we'll or a Myers missed field goal. Or an extra point. We'll be able to get down the field more. I just want to see. Maybe the reason I want for that score is more being a, f- a fan than me, obviously. I just want to see is to win a road game with some fire. I actually show up on the road. Oh, that yeah, has, what a 50 has, burger. That, that hasn't, well, that has, I mean, even a double digit score. That hasn't been done in the Garth Gus Bradley era. Um, no, it hasn't, but I, I honestly, I don't, I, I, I don't believe that much. I mean, it's, it's taking all, it's taking all I can do to, to, to give them that they win by seven. I do not believe in victory. Yeah, I'm not Gus Bradley. But, uh, I don't know. Hopefully we see some surprising results here. Yeah. Hopefully the offense starts clicking a little bit better. Well, hopefully Blake shows up. Well, um, speaking of that, I don't know if feeling, you... Feeling loose. What you got? Uh, uh, Blake, I think I think you might mention earlier, I'm not 100%. Um, I don't know if it's before the show or not, but you said that Blake said that he was kind of pressing. So maybe he stops pressing. He yeah. said he needs to play more loose and he... He started to play more loose in the indie game, and I thought you could see that. I think he looked like he was playing more loose. The other thing I saw when I was watching that indie game, Blake is so much better when he is out when of he, the pocket. Yes, when he has exactly. a little bit more That's control. a very good point. Why is he so much better rolling out? I, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's not good in a way, but it's they got to do it more. I don't know why they don't force him out more. Well, I think I think because they want they, they want him to stay in the pocket. But his completion percentage jumps. Oh yeah, it a jumps. Lot. It jumps by like eighteen percent or something like that. I think he's like close to seventy percent on rollout plays, and it, like it's way less in the pocket. Yeah. Uh, my little update before we wrap up the show: the San Diego Chargers are leading the Denver Broncos ten to three with four fifty-five left in the second. Is Trevor Simeon actually playing? Yes, I believe so. I know he was like. He didn't really practice during the week, but they were going to play it. Uh, double check and see. Yes, Simmons playing, and he's 5 of 8 for 30 yards. Ooh. 
So he's a little stinker. I, he's playing ish. He's kind of playing. He's, it's debatable. And Rivers is looking like Rivers. He's thirteen of eighteen for one forty-five and a touchdown. Well, good for my fantasy team. So with that little update, we're gonna wrap this puppy up. Thanks for joining us. This has been the Bullcast of Five Football Show. I'm Clay. I'm Jay. I'm Justin. And you can follow us on Boldcastify, Boldcastify Sports, or follow us on the Twitter handles, Till Apocalypse, JLove132, Justin the Red, and we'll see you next time. Boldcastify out. <laughs>